So we have array lists here, and uh, there's just a couple things that I wanted to go over before uh, moving forward. Um, we make our array list, we add objects to it, and then we print them out. Um, these objects are of type string, and uh, when we compile this, it says error, right? Can't convert object to type string, right? Because the for each loop does not do typecasting, right? It doesn't like automatically typecast. And the array list is an array list that's full of objects, right? Because array lists can only contain objects, uh, objects of type object, right? And object is a superclass of all classes. So we look up here, and uh, you could see that we didn't specify what type of uh, array list we're creating. So that's why it like defaulted to type object. And when we stuck these um, these objects in. Um, they couldn't like print them out because the for each loop doesn't typecast, right? So then what we could do is we can specify here string, right? And then we compile, um, and it still says object cannot be converted to type string, right? Still, this is still an array list of objects, right? So why? Because we didn't specify on this side, the left side, uh, what type we're using, right? Um, so this array list is an array list of strings, right? But they're being typecasted as type object. So then when it comes to the for each loop, it's saying, oh, these guys are objects, man. They're not strings, and I don't typecast. So this is not going to work. Okay, so we could do this. We could do this. And um, this is going to compile. This is going to compile. Um, and why right well in like java like 7 i think we're on like java this is java 8 uh, version 8 in java 7 this is a legal statement and this is equivalent to this okay so we're making um an array of type string and the definitions are going to be in string so typically this um would say that this wouldn't compile because we're making a uh, array of elements of type string and we're finding the definitions of these methods the string methods in the object uh, class right and that's moving up the hierarchy and that wouldn't compile so if you're using like java like six or whatever anything before seven um, this wouldn't compile but after seven this does compile and this is equivalent to that okay but anyways you should be using this method just for I don't know just for posterity's sake I'm not I'm not sure what the word is but let's just be safe and uh, specify on both sides right string string and then we have no syntax errors I run and this is what I get right ABCD as I should right because these guys are all strings and then I'm printing them out okay great so but what if I am removing right so I say like r dot remove uh, S right, but remove it uh, if uh, if S dot equals, um, and that's another thing, right? S you can't say dot equals a, right? I mean you can't say equal equals a, um, and and the reason why you can't do that is because equal equals are only valid for primitive data types, right? So since S is a string, string is treated like a primitive data type, but it's actually an object that has an array and uh, and you know every letter in the string is an element in the array of the object so anyhow so we need to use dot equals right dot equals a okay then if that's true we remove right so what should that do it should remove the first one and then print out b c d and exit out of the for each loop right and is that what it does well let's run it and it breaks right exception error okay well let's change this to b and see what that does. Let's run it. Exception error. Okay, so what is happening here, right? This is what you guys did, like a lot of you, like 95, I don't know the number, but like 90, like 7% of you did that, right? So that's not good. Um, and the reason why it's not good is because uh, the for each loop, it runs like in the background, it does i equals zero, right? And then it does i is less than r dot size. And then it does I plus plus. Right? 
So this is happening in the background. So i is equal to zero. We come in here, right? And then i, I'm sorry, i is equal to zero. And then i is less than four. There's four elements. Um, that's true. So it comes on in. That's not true. So it prints out the first one. Uh, we come back up. It increments i to one. And then it runs this. And that's true, right? One is less than four. It comes in here. It's equal to b. Removes the b, right? So b is not in there anymore and then prints or whatever, we come back up, we increment i to two, and then it checks is two less than the size, three. Yes, it is, right? So we, that's not true. And then we print or whatever it is, we come back up, and then i increments to three. Three is not less than three, and it stops working, right? So um, the, basic uh, lesson of this is that you can't remove in a for each loop right without having an exception error so how can you remove from a array list well there's several methods there you can use like an iterator right and we'll, we'll review that um, in the next like packet or you can use a for loop like a regular for loop right and just do a little bit of Java Kung Fu so like we'll say var no, I'm sorry, int i is equal to zero, i is less than, what is it, r dot size, and then we'll do i plus plus, right? But every time you remove, right, you're going to decrement the i variable, because when you remove, that changes the size, right? So this was four, and we remove, now this should be three, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to decrement the i variable, and that's going to make everything work out correctly, I believe. So yeah, I'll compile. Cannot find the s. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, this would need to be r dot get i, and then we'll compile. Nope. Remove s. No. Nope. R dot get i, and then. Oh, I need my brackets now because I have two lines. And I will do that. Compile. Oh, my goodness gracious. So we're going to compile. We're going to run. And we get it. It works. Compiles, right? And it behaves the way that we want it to behave, right? And so why? Well, if you follow the i variable and the get i's, um, will make sense to you, right? Because we remove the b, and then our i variable is going to go back one. So like the i, so i is equal to zero, right? And then we had b here. All right, i is equal to zero here, right? We don't remove, but we print. Then i is equal to one here, and we remove him, right? And if I if we didn't decrement i, i would be equal to two, right? Which is this element, and that's not good, right? We want this one to be considered, so we decrement i back to zero, and then it comes up and increments to one, and it takes a look at c, right? So in an array list, you're gonna use a regular for loop. When you remove, you're gonna decrement the i variable, and everything should work out the way that you think it should.